Hi everyone. The LAN party is back. And we're playing another game today. David and I are sitting down to play a game he fucking adores. Yeah, I like quite one of a my bit. favorite. I fucking suck at it though, so David's gonna play today. We're playing Rogue Legacy. This is one of my favorite games. Now you're real far into this right now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm on the second playthrough right now. It's gonna switch over to the gameplay. Got a whole bunch of stuff unlocked. It's actually a lot of fun because it's so expansive. I mean, you have tons of stuff to do. So, Rogue Legacy's been out for a while. It started as a, a PC. Came over to the console on PlayStation. Was actually given away as a plus game yeah. last month. Was one of the one free ones. Yeah. Um, I guess, basically, if you haven't played Rogue Legacy, what it is, uh, is it's basically a roguelike that they built out of Castlevania. But it has a metagame to it, so it's not exactly... <laughs> a roguelike. You earn currency, in this case gold, that you can use in between your lives. Um, and when you come back, you come back as your heir. Yep. So you get to select between the children that you've had. Which doesn't really make any sense. But there's also a feat that you can re-roll the children. Hmm. So if you don't get what you like, and now you just choose a child and go play. That gives you a bunch of different That's like random creepy. attributes that are based off of genetics. Some of them are defects. They aren't good and some of them are advantages which are obviously are good yeah like pad is uh, pad foot you don't set off the spike traps super useful i mean there's stuff like tunnel vision where it like clouds the outside of the screen but you can see where you know your character is and it's it's really tongue-in-cheek in the way it uses them they're really funny and kind of quirky and all of that is great but the thing that really makes this game amazing is how freaking tight the gameplay is yeah, I mean, it's not really forgiving either. <laughs> no, it is definitely hard. Let's, let's dive in. Let's see what this castle's like. So, of course, to enter the castle, you actually pay uh, Sharon, or Charon, however Charon, the hell you pronounce Chiron. it. Charon. You give him half your money, because I've upgraded it, but uh, usually you give him uh, all of your money. Mm. And then you start over fresh. And you become new money. Yep. Everything pretty much is destroyable. I'm playing as the dragon right now. Which, as you can see, can fly around the map and shoot fireballs. Uh, I'm on the second playthrough, so everything is in the second level of its uh, So these guys are more, much, much more hardcore than the ones I've heard. Yes. But you can avoid pretty much the whole jumping puzzle portion of it. You really are a dragon man. Yeah. Why, why jump when you can fly? I find it interesting that David, screw this one. The viewers may or may not know David is a uh, dragonborn, or at least he was in the D&D campaign we played. Who <laughs> was? And it, it so deeply scarred him that in life he pretty much does anything he needs to become a dragon again. Uh, that's carried over into Rogue Legacy. Yeah. I mean, uh, Dragon's actually one of my favorite characters just because he can fly. Yeah. You get rid of half the jumping puzzles, which are pains in the ass, and really. It's just useful. You can dodge really easily, as opposed to the others, where it gets challenging because you double jump or triple jump. Sometimes you can glide. Like, it's just a lot easier playing as somebody who can constantly fly. Yeah, I mean, this just looks like an enormous advantage. I know from when I was playing, I unlocked the improved version of the Shinobi, which is the Hokage. Yep. And I remember I was using, like, a Mega Man Dash. A, yep. Accompanied with the double jump, and it was like even that was an enormous advantage. But compared to like the ability to just constantly fly around and avoid the problems. Well, oh, and as you see, I wasn't paying attention, so I died. You were slain <laughs> by Zomboan. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> so as you die, it shows you what you've killed. Uh, it also sometimes you get a chance to not die. It'll mm. say death defy, and it'll let you go back with minimal health. Mm. But let's see. So it kicks you back to the main screen, and essentially you choose the the air you want. Um, as Brendan was telling you, there's a bunch of traits and special things. Uh, this guy has Coprolia? Corpolia. Which means every time you get hit, a uh, bubble box appears with like swear words in so old he, comics. He curses a lot. Yeah. So this is Sir Wallace V, Lich King. He feeds off the dead to gain permanent life for every kill, up to a cap. Yep. So, the thing with Lich is, uh, you actually sacrifice your HP for more magic. Mm. And that makes your spells super powerful, because you can just launch spells all the time. Um, Paladin, <laughs> he's a really, like, the standard basic hero. 
He's uh, actually what I used to fight the game or beat it the first time. Mm. Um, he also has Chakram, which is one of my favorite magic spells. You throw out this weird disc, and it just kind of goes, and then flies back, and kills a whole bunch of stuff. Around. But, of course, you saw the main... Ah, Sir Cowan the Fourth. A he's, dragon. He's a man dragon. He's a man dragon with Alzheimer's. <laughs> so Alzheimer's is actually a funny trait. It means you. Alzheimer's is always hilarious. Yeah, always. <laughs> but in this case, you don't know where you are in the map. You can't pull up a a, a map. <laughs> that is funny, actually. <laughs> so like, as you're exploring, half of the thing with uh, Rogue Legacy is uh, using your map to know where you've been, so you can go back to the forest or the dungeons or wherever. It has a certain degree of like Metroidvania like qualities to it, where certain abilities help you explore yeah. certain things. But the castle. I guess the other thing that we didn't mention, the castle is procedural. Yeah. So every so it time... it changes every single time. Yeah, you have a new life to come back. It's totally different. Unless you activate a mechanic that lets you replay the previous castle, but there's like a, a decrease in the value of the yeah. treasure. So it takes like 60% of your gold to keep the castle the way it is. So as with Dragon, you see all the, the power-ups. I, uh, I enjoy magic just because that increases your damage as a dragon. Sure. Um, which makes him... Hit harder, which is probably the only downside to the dragon. It doesn't hit very hard. But your main screen has your your blacksmith, your rune lady, and then your creepy old guy with goggles. Mm. So sixty percent of your gold will lock the castle. Why not? Why not play, play, playing for money at the moment? No. Yeah. So now you're gonna get to play the same version that you just played through. Correct. Okay. Um, what this does is it actually sets the the castle exactly how you have it mapped. Which, granted, I have Alzheimer's, so I'm not really going to be able to pull up the main map. Sure. It right. resets all the enemies, but not your treasure chests. So, like, if you have a fairy chest or a, a regular chest that you hadn't got, and you died in the middle of it, and you really, really wanted the rune, you can go back and get it. Maybe you could hopefully select an air that had a different ability set if you were locked out from the other or something. That'll make you a little bit more effective. Mm. Now, I remember the boss room up here. Mm. Yes, sir. Now again, this is... Uh, the main plot is there are four bosses guarding the main door to the throne room. And that's where you're trying to get. Because your father betrayed you or something. This is the, uh, the actual castle's gatekeeper, Heater. God, dear. He's kind of a... He's an eyeball that bleeds at you aggressively. Very aggressively. Now I know from fighting him, actually in my playthroughs, that your winging thing you miss is going to be an advantage against him. It is. But my jumping around these things was not impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of terrible to jump around. It. You just don't have as much control. But as you see, I'm running into a magic problem. Since my attacks are all magical, I don't have enough mana to actually continue hitting them. But with this game, a lot of it is staying away from the danger. <laughs> For which... Whoa! God damn, look at that. There are some... Uh, the bosses are actually really cool. I love the slime in the dungeon, even though he's wicked hard. Um, he splits into a bunch of littler slimes. <laughs> Which just make it impossible. I don't know where that started in, in games or something. So, like, a lot of these video games, they base their monster lore, kind of, off of like Dungeons & Dragons or something. But somewhere along the line, somebody thought it was this great gimmick that, like, slime monsters will just turn into smaller versions of themselves over and over again. I always remember it the other way around. In uh, Dragon Warriors on the NES, you actually had a chance to get a slime king if you fought a bunch of little slimes. They'd all just conjoin into the giant... Slime healing monster, which sucked. So that's, of course, the room I died in. We're just gonna avoid it like a real person. <laughs> but, yeah. Like that, like a yeah, this is actually hysterical watching you fly through this. Like, Half of know. this is really hard. I'll, I'll the, the, do a jumping character. I'm gonna die soon, anyways. Well, I remember like the playthroughs I had going with it. I think obviously you agree with this because both of us were Nintendo gamers. They they based a lot of the stuff off of games people were used to from like the NES era. The monsters yeah. are like stripped out of Castlevania and Ghouls and Ghosts, and they're there in recognizable patterns from those games. Yeah. So when I got into it, it was it was kind of weird because it was a new game to me. I hadn't touched it before, but at the same time, like I was like, oh, old skeleton is old. 
you're gonna throw those bones in an arc, and I I just need to get in your sweet spot and then take you out. Every uh, once in a while, they psych you out, though. Oh yeah, yeah. I hate the skeletons. And it will it will also like throw you a bad curveball. Like all of a sudden, they'll be gigantic, <laughs> and you'll be like, okay, well, I was used <laughs> to the arc, but now it fills the room. I'm not sure there's any way to get around this. Um, yeah, I mean, really, this game is just really well put together. I could spend hours just playing this game. You have. You're level 169. <laughs> As you can see, I have glaucoma this time. Glaucoma. So I can't really see very far away. That's, that's kind of sad. But I'm in the paladin. Uh, he's got this cool shield. I believe you're a shield. You do have a bow in your hand. Yeah, actually, I am a girl. A lady. Oh, well. Big lady, then. Ladies kick ass, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> Especially like this game. Is not they clearly. Oh god. <laughs> bow is the best thing they came up with. No so worries. every once in a while, you get into these fairy chest rooms. Mm. They give you an objective: kill everything, don't take any damage, or uh, I think that's it. Just kill everything or don't take any. Well, there's a couple of different, like they'll be like get to the chest without being damaged or kill everything in the room. So like this, <laughs> not impossible. <laughs> not impossible. Even with the dragon flying through those freaking things, are crazy. With the bugs, which music. changes all the music. <laughs> the, the have you read the, all, any of the titles in the no. musics? I mean, there are some that are really Narwhal. funny. Narwhal. Narwhal. Always funny. Um, broadside of the broadsword. <laughs> I like that. I mean, a lot of these. Uh, Sweet, troll bite, poot yan. <laughs> Sea Sours. You can do, uh, the fish and the whale. The fish and the whale. I always like this. It's like the one. It's weird not being able to fly. It's the only problem with being a dragon yeah, all the time. You're addicted to that dragon power now. If you don't have it, things are getting ugly. Lock them in a corner. So, now I think this is one of the things that I've been really loving about the PS4 and Sony's recommitment to the indie system. If you're a PC gamer, if you're on the PC Master Race, you're getting lots of indies like this all the time. Yeah. And for somebody like me who's pretty light in PC gaming, I'm not on Steam all the time downloading all these things. Sony acting as a curator and putting them on console, getting them into the controller interface that I like, the console controller interface. I keep getting these gems, like something like Rogue Legacy, they've been out for well over a year before it came to the yeah. I don't think I would have ever bought this by itself, but since it was free. Right, and then I got into it and I was like, wow, this is really, this would have been worth a lot of money. And then because I downloaded it as a plus game, that does help the developer to something free. And, you know, you end up evangelizing for the games that we've gotten through PlayStation Plus. I think this is definitely one of the better ones that we've gotten. I think even of the platformers, like, obviously it's an amazing platform that we've got, but some of the ones we've gotten as plus games have been amazing. We had Mercenary Kings last Mercenary year. Mercenary Kings is awesome. This actually reminds me of Mercenary Kings pretty hard. Yeah, it's good. Pretty hard. It's good vibes of it. So It's weird, this one riffs on Castlevania and Ghouls and Ghosts the way that one did on Mega Man and Contra. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I think, too, these are games that are very much aimed at us, like our generation of gamer. <laughs> like, this is definitely a, hey, remember those platformers on Nintendo that they don't really make anymore, well, they still make them too. Yeah. And, I mean, really, this is uh, not really in depth. <laughs> I mean, in terms of gameplay, you can stop at any time. You can just pause it. Yeah. And walk away. And I also should mention, too, most of the time I have been playing this, I've spent it playing on Vita. And it's awesome as a portable game, especially at lunch at work. I don't want to listen to everybody bitch about whatever stupid thing was said in the last dumb game. Around. What are you talking about? Point Break is yeah. the best movie. Yeah, we talk about a lot of Point Break at work. Swayze. We see you, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Adam and your Swayze love. No, I love... Strange man on Swayze love. <laughs> Some of the, the lunch break stuff is really funny, actually. You gotta spell it in the scene before. There's like a little crow. This is a uh, the storm. Lich Queen. So, Liches have this spell that's uh, a raven. Um, essentially it summons one raven per enemy and it goes and attacks that enemy. Yeah. Usually clearing rooms, sometimes not. Um, not on like the bumblebee buster. <laughs> but as you can see with the lich, I can sacrifice half my health and get it back in mana. Which puts me at 39 HP, but as you kill things, it gets uh, more and more HP. So you have a 
uh, kind of simple supply map. And eventually it caps, but uh, I, I like the ledge a lot. So I think too, from talking to people who've been playing it, when you're going through the game, if you want to have some success in it, it is kind of hard. <laughs> As you can see, death comes quickly. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was totally planned. The trick is to sort of find the classes that fit the way you play this game, yeah. and then sort of stick to them as much as you can and master that skill set. There's the dragon again. <laughs> you just can't resist. Flexible is actually a really fun thing. If you have dash, you can actually fit where the midgets can. The small people. The wee folk. Let's see if I can find... There are lots of, like, hidey holes. I don't know. This game, since it's a procedural dungeon, it's not the same thing every time. Which makes it interesting. I mean, you can just keep going. I don't... Can you actually plus your account or your level after you beat it again? Can you just keep going? I have no idea. I mean, I haven't beaten it. I think I stopped playing around like the mid 40s. I've killed the first boss. I think I made it to the second one. But that was as far as I got with it. And I mean, honestly, Rogue Legacy was the game I played while I was downloading other things. And then <laughs> as soon as I got into Persona 4, that took that spot. So now it's just been sidelined permanently. It's actually kind of rough. We had so many good games come out this spring. It's hard to keep track. I know. I'm kind of hoping the fall release schedule is as crappy as it's looking. Because it's like, well, I got plenty of games to play. Oh, now I'm going into the dungeon. Mm, yes, look at that guy. He looks like a this is another one of those splitty slime things. Ah, so he's so the to boss become... of the dungeon is one of these guys. But he splits like a million times. <laughs> and of course, they're leaving fire trails, which makes them. This would be nightmarishly difficult to keep them flat. Oh yeah, those spikes. spikes. So, we're gonna... <laughs> it's good. I often wonder who builds these dungeons. I mean, like, even as a bad guy, this is not a particularly practical place to house anything. Your minions, your treasure... <laughs> Like, unless you're, like, fucking Neo or Jesus or something, how are you going to get back to it when you need your stuff? <laughs> I mean, they're essentially the same <laughs> character, but... <laughs> no, I don't even think Jesus would be down with this place, to be completely honest. I have no idea. I don't think he plays video games. <laughs> Damn it. And... But Lady Jenny <laughs> slain by Guard Box XL. Yeah. Those guard boxes are crazy. But, I mean, really, Rogue Legacy, as you die, it just doesn't matter. It gives you that, I don't know if you play it, but uh, the way I do, the, when I die, I'm like, dedicated to getting another guy, going back to that room, or going back and finishing that whole exploration of the level. Yeah, well, I think this is another game, sort of like playing Dark Souls and sort of like playing Bloodborne, where... Death, uh, you, you have to rewire your brain because failure is not measured in your character dying or in you no. losing your way in the game. You're constantly just measuring yourself in how much further you got or how much you did achieve in the time that you had. Yeah. And so. it's it's rewarding. I am the sword mage. The sword mage. So he gets uh, Monobaka and he kills enemies? Mm. I think it's kills enemies. I don't really play him a lot. Looked interesting. He's got another one of the more effective spells, which is the fire shield. The fire shield. I mean, really. <laughs> I don't know. I could play this game for a long time. It's just. Although that's uh, the new game plus a pretty goddamn game. Well, because it takes all the hardcore enemies and just makes them normal, regular, everyday enemies. But you do get more gold. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's what you are. You're like, mad cash, you know, these short lives are living. Yeah, I mean, I'm already up to three grand. Well, I suppose at this point, you have quite a bit of the game unlocked anyway. Gold must not be pushing much no. more than any of your passive stats at this point. Yeah, and you have... Uh, here, we'll go... The cage. Um, so you unlock everything pretty easily. Now you're only building into your main stats. Crit, a lot of attack, and then health, armor, and the cool thing, equipped up. So you actually have a weight limit. Oh, so, so as you pick up... encumbrance as you go. Yeah, as you pick up uh, uh, armor that's better or craft it, 
Uh, you can only carry 300 pounds or however much. Yeah, however much they give you. Yeah, so I'm up to 310 right now. Oh, wow, so there's a lot of swords you still don't even have. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I don't have. <laughs> and you get a lot of this from the, the fairy chests. That's where you usually get all the runes, and sometimes you get them from the regular chests, but mostly it's the challenges, you know, don't die. <laughs> right. Or don't get hit. <laughs> I hate the don't get hit. Don't fight. <laughs> don't fight. <laughs> this is just silly. But yeah, I like the whole cage, actually. He's really cool. He also has a really high jump. Yeah. The thing I liked about him was, like, you uh, sacrifice critical, but you just do much more damage base. Yeah. So, so I'm doing consistent. 150 damage as opposed to uh, the Paladin, which was doing 60. Yeah. Makes him... tearing up <laughs> Plus, you can do that cool innate spell where you replace yourself with a block of wood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm invisible now. I also, uh, this game is very nostalgic for me because I'm using the D-pad, so it's not a joystick game for me. Yeah. I think for platforming, the sticks just suck. They just fucking suck. You want that precision of, I hit the button, I want to go the fixed distance and interrupt it quickly if I have to, like... Yeah. I don't want to be dealing with this kind of measured response. I get how in, like, a 3D platformer, like something like Super Mario Sunshine or something like that, you want... As much... Yeah. Like, like the, the, the control of that, too, and, like, the gradation to it. But in something like this, D-pad control is it's at. It always drives me kind of nuts when I have my games, and they're like, no, just use the stick. Like, <laughs> or not. Or I can actually play the game. Taint natural! <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't as smart as this guy. <laughs> that's good, that's good. You're winning the you're winning the mind game. Well I am a ninja. It's a crafty, crafty ninja. I don't know. This <laughs> for a free game, I think I would have 24, 25 bucks for it. Yeah, definitely. I think if you Easy. don't have it and you are looking for a game with a decent difficulty curve, and you fondly remember anything that was on the NES. Anything <laughs> old school. Just get right into it. I mean, this has like elements of everything. Like Ducktails, freaking. Ducktails. It does. It's the butt stomp. <laughs> you got the the Scrooge McDuck butt stomp in it. Oh, Straight out of that game. My word. But it's got like pieces of it everywhere. Um, it's interesting because this came out too, and was it like next week or the week after we get uh, uh, Shovel Knight? The week after. Yeah. I think Bastion's next week. Yeah. So Shovel Knight's coming out. That's part of the Spring Fever. That's one of the other two games in that list that I'm going to be getting. And that's another one that's like this. It's an homage to those games. And both of these did really well, and I think it's because those, like I said, generationally, there's just a huge market for them and guys like us. Yeah. I mean, really, this is the, uh, <laughs> the market. This is what their intended audience was supposed to be. Well, but you've seen Rogue Legacy, one of my favorite games. Definitely pick it up if you haven't. Get on that. That's a David Manning <laughs> recommendation. Yeah. Two thumbs up, even. Two thumbs up. We're gonna <laughs> Ebert and Roper this shit. You spoke, you spoke for my thumb. <laughs> Damn right I did. Two thumbs up from uh, the land party on our little Let's Plays. Uh, pay attention to the channel. We're going to be putting more of these up. Bear with us as we yep. get some of the technical stuff ruled out. And we got most of it ironed out now. Yeah, yeah. We're getting closer. Every day we learn a little <laughs> bit more. It's our own little roguelike. Technical failures. Except for we don't have kids and then die and then take over possession. That's what we're doing wrong.